What a da boys, welcome to another video. If you're new to my channel, please don't leave. I do smell a bit fishy, but uh, I promise you I am a good crack. No pun intended. <laughs> Not even sorry. You need to bring a bike and you need to do this trail. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Dancing in the midge. Do you know, if I'd have been asked as a child where I thought my number one holiday destination would be, I'd have probably said like Hawaii or something. Yet here I am in Scotland again. <laughs> I think I must have been a midge in a previous life because I absolutely love it here. So I'm currently on the Isle of Lismore, which is off the west coast of Scotland in the Argyll area. And I'm gonna be exploring Argyll for around the next five and a half days. And I'm exploring by bike, in case you haven't guessed by the helmet. I'm not just wearing it for fun. I'm gonna be doing some bike packing using the Wild About Argyll bike packing route, which is like a 200 and something mile route, um, which takes you to all corners of Arg Argyll. So I'm proper buzzing, even though I've been up since half past four this morning. Um, I've been on Scotland now for a few days because I've actually been over on the Isle of Mull. So this morning I started off in Oban after staying in the Backpackers Plus hostel last night, which was proper nice, really clean, really quirky looking. And I probably had the best night's sleep I've ever had in a hostel, to be honest. Um, I don't know about the other people mind because I was up at half past four creaking down the corridor to go and brush my teeth. So if I haven't already shown you what I've been exploring so far this morning, we'll roll that now. If I have, then we'll just go exploring from now. I haven't really planned this video, I'm not gonna lie. I started my first day of cycling on the train, not cycling. But this is not just any train. This is the Highland Explorer carriage, which runs on the West Highland line between Oban and Glasgow. These carriages have been especially designed to support active travel. Definitely didn't just read that off the Scott Rail website. They provide space for 20 individual bikes. 20 bikes, mind? Have you ever been on a train in Wales? You're lucky if you get two. And there's seating for 24 people in the carriage. Honestly, I just wanted to try it so that I could start campaigning for this in Wales. I actually only went on one stop. I literally just wanted to try it. Thank you very much. I was on my way, buzzing to be out before most people were up and freely exploring on my bike, not knowing what was gonna be around each corner. You might be wondering where my bike packing kit is. Well, the first day was actually a loop, so I was starting and finishing back in Oban. Less weight on the bike for the first day, always a bonus. From Cornell Bridge, I headed east along the bank of Loch Eteve. This is such a piss. This is such a picturesque route. This is such a picturesque, I can't say picturesque. This is such a scenic route. <laughs> you could do this out of Oban in a day on any bike. The only gravel I encountered was on Lismore and that was just by choice, so you wouldn't have to do it. There's a little bit of a hill here, but nothing crazy. And look at the views. Classic Scottish views, beautiful. The number one rule of visiting the Oban area is that you have to go and see Castle Stalker. This was a slight detour from Port Appen, which is where I was headed, but I had plenty of time. So fun fact for you, the castle was used as one of the locations for the film Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Thank you. 
Port Appin is where you get the ferry across to Lismore and luckily enough for me I was in plenty of time to get a caffeine fix at the Pier House Hotel. You know a place is nice when you get fancy organic hand lotion. There we go, oh, thank you. This ferry operates on a turn up and go service, so you don't have to book it and it literally cost me a couple of pound. I can't even get a taxi into Cardiff for that and I live in Cardiff, it's so cheap. I only bought a single because I'd be returning via the other ferry port on Lismore which takes you back to Oban. So I've just headed out on a little evening adventure because, um, well look at the weather, <laughs> be rude not to, um, and I've got deja vu because where this is now, so between Oban is there and Carrera is there and you see that ferry's coming out of Oban, so I had to cross this when I was doing my adventure triathlon last year and it was the middle of the day and it was really busy and there were so many ferries. <laughs> Um, even though the distance wasn't far and I crossed much bigger distances with like ferries, Oban is such a busy ferry lane that, um, yeah, I just can't my pants to be honest. <laughs> um, but I'm avoiding crossing today, so I'm just going out for a nice little uh, bit of a bimble to be honest. I'm hoping there's going to be a nice sunset behind Mull. I am slightly tempted to cross to this random little lump of an island though. Um, Shall I? Shall I? See, there's another ferry going into Oban now. It's literally been like one minute since one went out that way and now that one's coming in that way. You can see why I cat my pants crossing that, can't you? They move so fast and you literally just, you can't be anywhere near them because of the wake. And also, you can get in quite a lot of trouble for like <laughs> being in the way.
morning. Um, this morning I met, I'm going to say this wrong by the way, um, Elena Bach? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, and I'm opposite a little island called Easdale. Um, so the plan was potentially this morning to paddle around Easdale. However, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I would rather paddle this on like a high tide, high slackish tide. Um, it just so happens I got the opposite, so <laughs> so I'm not going to do that today. So what I'm going to do is paddle across to Easdale, and there's like old quarries on there. Um, so I really fancy going for a swim in the quarry pools. So I'm going to go and explore that. So yeah, I'm excited about doing that this morning. Don't know why I'm ducking, just in case you can't see me. You probably can. I'm like a greasy, sun creamy mess because what is this weather? It's amazing. It's gone like really sunny, <laughs> and it's supposed to be really nice for the next few days. Oh, also. Minor problem with the bike, which I was going to mention yesterday. It was my only concern about this trip. So a couple of weeks ago, right, long story short, because you know I'm like just like a massive waffler. Long story short, <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, I got a puncture in each tyre. And they're tubeless tyres, so they've got goo inside them that like seals the plug. There's no tube in there. And I did think, shall I get new tyres? And I literally haven't got around to it. And then this trip was quite last minute. So I haven't got new tyres. So I just bought new sealant, because I've never put new sealant in the tyres before. So the night before I was starting this trip, did a bit of a mission to put the sealant in. I know, classic, night before. Um, and again, long story short, don't ask me how this happened, but I accidentally put two full tubes of sealant in the back tire and none in the front. <laughs> Just don't ask, right? If anyone could do it, it's me. Um, so <laughs> I thought, ah, oh, crap, but there's nothing I could really do. So I've left it. So just now I'm getting my kit out of the van and I can hear like, hissing and I was like oh god then I could see sealant coming out of the front tyre which is the one that I haven't put any in and I noticed the plug where I'd got the puncture a couple of weeks ago has like come apart and I think it's because of the heat so I've like flipped the tyre around and got the sealant in it and then like put my finger on it to like kind of clot it clot it um ew and um and it, and it has it is now holding so i've like rammed the tea towel in like the wheel arch thing to like hold the tire and i'm just gonna pray that that's gonna be all right but like i've got tubes with me but i really don't fancy trying to put a tube in a tubeless tire it's gonna be messy probably not gonna be able to do it if i'm honest i've got a plugger thing not sure i really trust that either anyway we'll cross our bridge when we come to it i'm sure we're gonna come to it i can feel it coming anyway cross your fingers <laughs> Getting out of there is not the easiest thing in the world. <laughs> oh, it's so flippin' lush in there. I definitely want to do some jumps. But I just got to climatise the water first. It's actually not that bad to be fair, but um, I'm just gonna go for it. Can't not, it's so good here. Oh, I'm buzzing. <laughs> I didn't realise it was gonna be this good. Stupidly in my head, when I thought quarry pool, I didn't think about jumps. Absolutely jumping. <laughs> Small jump to begin with. Oh, you a bit.
Buenos dias. I'm uh, Spanish, apparently. Um, I'm also <laughs> back on my bike this afternoon. Um, I've just had some nice mussels and chips at the pub in Elena Park. <laughs> I'll never get it right. Um, oh God, why am I, why am I talking to you on the hill? Um, yeah, anyway, I've had mussels and chips and a sh cheeky shandy and I've driven over to Kill... This is not because I can't pronounce it, it's because I've forgotten. I think it's Kill Melford, <laughs> something like that, anyway. And uh, I've ditched the van at this nice church um, car park and uh, this afternoon I'm doing a loop. I'm going to loop back to my van via a couple of locks and uh, then take my van to tonight's accommodation and then from tomorrow I'm bike parking for the next three days so leaving my van in the next place. Anyway, you don't need to know this right now, I'm just uh, <laughs> my salty hair and my sea water coming out my nose. Just wanted to tell you, okay? <sighs> anyway, this is a bit of a this is a bit of a beast, so uh, if you don't mind I could uh, do with me other arm, you know? The other arm. Ooh, ooh. Flipping air. This is lovely though. Yoo hoo! What a day! So this turned out to be one of my favourite sections of sighting of the whole trip, especially when I got to the section between Loch Avic and Loch Or, where I follow the River Avic, which you'll see shortly. This song is called No School Today and the reason I've picked it is because that's literally how I felt. I felt like I was doing a bunk off school, like I'd grabbed my bike and I decided to go rogue. It was awesome. This is freaking meant boys. Oh! You knew it was coming. I haven't done one of those this trip. <laughs> like, you need to come here, you need to bring a bike, and you need to do this trail. Like, dim jokes boys, dim jokes. Especially if the weather's like this, like I can't promise, I'll try and book it for you lads, but uh, Scotland. <laughs> I have been so, so lucky. Ah! Not even sorry. Suddenly my life doesn't seem such a waste. What? Hope you're enjoying this shot. I'm in the wrong gear trying to go up this hill to get the shot for you. Yeah. boys so I'm just paddling along the shore of bank shore whatever um of Loch Or shore of Loch Or or not or um it's flipping stunning but it kind of all looks the same as in it's stunning and I'm loving it but I'm not gonna film loads more because it's probably boring to watch. So, uh, I'm gonna, unless something happens, like get savaged by a bear or get my eyes gouged out by a sea eagle, then uh, I'll see you at my stop. 
Funnily enough, none of those things happened, but this wasn't my stop either, but you know, you can't see these guys and not film them. Camels? Hi camels! Expected to be this cool. Look at me with my helmet on. <laughs> Production. Oh, look. The cellar. I just, to be honest, I just want to get down here. Ooh. Oh, God, I can't see anything. Bear with. So much better. Whoa. Sorry guys, I won't jump out on you. Look at this. This is so flipping cool. Good views. Whoa. I know I just keep saying whoa, but whoa. <laughs> this is amazing. What's in you? Oh my god, there's like, oh there's, whoa, there's a hole! <laughs> That's what she said, what was that? Oh, <laughs> cupboard. This is like, this is like your childhood dream, you know, with like loads of little, like, bits to go in. This is so cool. I wish I'd got here earlier. Ooh. <laughs> Home to... 25,000 pigeons. Oh my god, these steps are really small. <laughs> They're like really hard to... You only really feel like you're gonna trip because... This is mint, boys! Oh, I wish I had more time now. God, it's a long way. Ah. Oh. And with it. oh, there's the pigeons. <laughs> right, lads. Seen you turd. Top effort. Oh god. Honestly, these steps are absolute calf burners because because they're so small. Whoa! Oh, hi big hands. This is amazing. This is so cool. That's a long way. This is epic. Okay, this is me caning it back to get my van. I have been caning it till now, I just had to stop for this. Look at it. Okay, I'm getting peppered with midges, let's go. <laughs> morning we're gonna leave my bike there for a second um because the first stop on today's magical mystery tour is exploring this linear graveyard in kilmartin graveyard is that the right word linear cemetery basically it's a bunch of like really old 
bucket. <laughs> I'll get back to you on what it is. <laughs> but it's history, okay? History. Um, so we're going to go to the first ancient cairn, which is over here. Um, it's a big pile of rocks, but I promise you there's a lot of history behind this big pile of rocks. <laughs> I'd never be a history tour guide, would I? Let's be real. <laughs> I'm hoping there's going to be a sign that'll explain it 7,000 times better than I can. <laughs> we have a sign, don't worry. Historic Scotland's got our back. They're not leaving it up to me, thank God. Um, Glebe Cairn. A powerful couple was buried here with their prized possessions about 4,000 years ago. So it's from the Bronze Age. That's pretty cool, isn't it? You know what jet is? No, not It's fossilised wood. Right. It's fossilised monkey puzzle. No way. Wood comes from uh, Whitby in Yorkshire. Yeah. Got my tent strapped on the bike. Right. <laughs> so be right free. That's the way to do it. <laughs> it right. is. Well, camping is legal in Scotland. Exactly, yeah, that's right. why I like it. <laughs> do it anywhere you like, apart from people's gardens and that. Like yeah, that. that's what I love about it. It's so good. Lovely chat to a Scottish chap back there, but uh, told me I need some oil on my chain, which <laughs> doesn't bode well and doesn't surprise me either. Okay, so let's give you some of the history that I failed to give you at the time. So in Kilmartin Glen, there's this two kilometre line of cairns. These five burial monuments all date to about 5,000 to 3,500 years ago and are associated with many other ritual monuments of the area such as Templewood Stone Circle. Obviously I'm reading this as you can tell. The rare axe head carvings found in one of the cairns two cysts suggest that this was the burial place of a high status individual. Axes were an indicator of wealth. Kilmartin Glen is definitely somewhere that I wish I'd had a little bit more time. Like there's so much stuff in this one small area and it's somewhere where you would just drive through and you wouldn't have a clue that any of this was here unless you were looking at a map. I've been to Crinan, which I'm going to go to in a second in this video, and I did not know any of this was nearby. This is the Tileworks Trail, which is in a nature reserve which I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce the name of. But there's more than 5,000 years of history locked in the peat layers here. It's basically a huge peat bog. We love a peat bog. King of the Castle. And this is Dunad, or Dunad, or I actually want to say Dunav. Hillfort, where Scottish kings were anointed between AD 500 and AD 900. I've just arrived at Crinan. I've got the loch behind me which heads out to the Sound of Jura and the Crinan Canal behind me. And this is very familiar to me because last year when I did my Scottish Adventure Triathlon on the paddleboarding section I actually used the Crinan Canal um, to cut out having to go all the way around the Kintyre Peninsula um, and that's what a lot of the sailing boats do so you go from Loch Gilphead across to Crinan via the canal and I remember it so well because it has a lot of locks <laughs> um, which is all right if you're on a boat but when you're on a paddleboard and you've got to do a portage and you've got 7,000 pieces of kit it's quite tiring you know <laughs> um, and also I remember it very distinctly because I was really flipping nervous that day because I knew I was going to be heading out into the Sound of Jura um, so I was rushing, trying to get here as quickly as I could because I wanted the good conditions. So I had to go out, cross this loch, which was distinctly more windy than it is today. Um, and through Doris Moor, which is quite a rough tidal race, can be a rough tidal race. I made it through Doris Moor! Woohoo! <laughs> and then out into the Sound of Jura. I was papping my pants. It was probably the bit, it was definitely the bit of the entire thing that I was most scared of. So yeah, today is much calmer, more tranquil visit. I'm gonna go and get a coffee. I was headed for Loch Sween next, but on the way I stopped at this really cool little beaver wildlife centre. Get ready for incoming beaver videos. The 
yeah, I've got a big head. Does it account for that? Yeah, see, I've Are got there a, sizes. I've got a really odd. <laughs> Of a bullet shaped head, but then you've got hair as well, so that might. If it suddenly like shoots off like a balloon like, <laughs> yeah. in the water, then you know why. It's yeah. Head. Attraction. And then behind like it's that. It's going to fly off my hand. That's it, that's it. <laughs> oh, that looks really smooth. There we go. Am I in? You're no, in, I yeah. I've just got to turn my hair in. Just watch the step. I'm actually so buzzing after that swim session we're done. Like, oh my god, look at this view over by here, right? Hang on, we'll get back to the... Can you see that on there? Oh, not really. Okay, it is... C'est magnifique. Oh, Jesus. Bear with. I'm popping out punctures left, right and centre today, like, no jokes. I think it's the same punctures reopening. Um, I don't know why. This is tube, I think I've already explained this, but um, it's tubeless. So you've got to get the sealant to go to the punctures. I just keep suddenly hearing and I'm like, oh God, <laughs> emergency. I think it's sealed again. But I always feel like I don't want to get straight back on the bike when, when it's just punctured in case. Oh, look there, see? You see that, boys? Puncture zone, war zone. <laughs> I'm gonna give that puncture five minutes just to like let the sealant seep into it. Cause I always feel like if you ride off too quickly, it's just gonna do it again. Um, so yeah, anyway, that swim session with Dan was literally like I'm proper buzzing. I'm such a bad swimmer, right? That I honestly can't remember the last time that I did front crawl. <laughs> I just do breaststroke. Like, and it's mad because I do so many water sports, but like, well, not so many water sports, but like I'm, I mean, not on the water like a lot, but like most of the time I've got a big inflatable board with me and a buoyancy aid, or if I'm surfing, I've got a surfboard. So like, you know, and I can swim, like I'm fine, but I'm just not, I wouldn't go, I wouldn't go out swimming and do like front, basically I can't do front crawl, right? <laughs> so beating around the bush, I can't do front crawl. Like I would have learned it as a kid, haven't done it since pretty much. Um, so I've been saying for years that I really want to do adult swimming lessons at some point in my life. Um, but just like haven't got around to it and stuff but honestly doing one session and and going right back to the basics and this is the thing that was so good is because as old adults i feel like we quite often like miss the basics or we want to miss the basics like we want to rush through the basics and just get to the juicy stuff but like over the years like i've become so okay with spending time in the basics we basically spend like the entire session just me learning how to like breathe properly for front crawl and i don't even feel like i learned that when i learned to swim the first time as a kid um and it was only at the very end that we like actually tried some front crawl strokes and to be honest i was a little bit reluctant about doing it because the normal me like the ego me would usually be like yeah i can do it kind of thing but because of all the breathing and stuff, I was in such a like a relaxed state that I kind of didn't want to wreck it. And I felt like if I try front crawl now, I'm just going to like just be like a drowning elephant. Um, and I'm going to like put myself back in a heightened state. And I just I like I really want to stay like in such a calm state. But anyway, I thought, no, I'm going to do it because Dan's here and it'd be good to like, you know, get more tips and stuff. So I did it. And honestly, it literally would not break any records. And like you would look at it and be like that was crap but to me the fact that i like front crawled and like went forward with my head under the water and like felt fine didn't flap like and actually propelled i'm actually I, honestly i'm really chuffed <laughs> like i'm massively chuffed and i feel like one set one open water swimming session has like magnified my confidence by like a thousand percent to the point where i'm like really excited to go swimming like actual swimming like i actually want to I'm gonna buy goggles and like actually go swim in. I, I'd honestly, I'd recommend that to anyone, like any level, because Dan coaches like triathletes and all sorts. Um, like he's, you know, he does like top level people, but then he can just also do like drowning elephants like me. Um, <laughs> but it's like specifically for open water, which like is amazing because then you get the benefits of like. Anyway, I'm just, I'm just waffling on. <laughs> I'm dwarfing on, but um, yeah, amazing. Honestly, that was so good. Oh my God, look how good this is. Whoa.
just mashing my way across this field. <laughs> I just want to get to the top of this and I'm hoping that there's a little bit of flat land and some grass so I can have that sunset. I've just crossed a bog. <laughs> I ain't got the right shoes on for bogs and uh, my bike's really heavy to like lift across. Anyway, I've done it, so whatever. Um, let's go up here and see what it's like, is it? Pushing. <laughs> oh my gosh, this flipping hill is a bit of a base surprise. Oh, it's lovely though. <sighs> I'm just hanging. <laughs> I'm on top of the world. Woo! Okay, let's get down to the Talbot for breakfast and the biggest coffee you've ever seen in your life. Forget the mug, I want a trough. And that, my friends, is what happens when you have a breakfast dessert. You can tell I'm a noob to this, can't you? <laughs> Not quite got the technique somehow. Oh, it's going a bit straight now. 
Oh no, we're turning. We're turning, boys. I meant to do this. Let's turn. I keep trying to paddleboard it. <laughs> this is really cool. The flipping water is amazing. Not being funny, right? But I feel like we could play Is This Scotland or a Tropical Island? And people would get it wrong. How insane is this place? By the way, this place was awesome as well, the Nook. It's literally whatever they've caught. So the menu changes like week on week. The week before they'd had octopus in. Kind of gutted I missed that, to be honest. Just uh, fighting my way through <laughs> some ferns. <laughs> Look behind me because I think it's going to be worth it to get up there and hopefully get a good camp spot. Because um, there's quite a few people camped down there, but I know no one could be asked to come all the way up here. <laughs> <laughs> the lengths I'll go to to find a spot that no one else could be asked to go to. <laughs> You can see why they can't be asked, can't you? If I get up there now and there's someone there, I'm going to be fuming. I mean, obviously I know there's no one there because I've come up there to put the camera there. <laughs> but uh, for video effect, let's pretend I don't know whether there's anyone there or not. Oh, would you look at that? There's nobody here. Like I didn't know. <laughs> Didn't have a clue, mate. Oh, look at that. I mean, I see why there's no one here because there's not actually anywhere to camp. <laughs> um, so I think I'm just going to camp on the path by there. Like no one's coming up now. I'm going early in the morning. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Dancing in the midnight. Everybody's feeling. Spidey and bright. It's such a fine midge sight. Everybody's dancing in the midnight. My next uh, single, <laughs> dancing in the midnight. There we are, lads. Pitched. Have it. Havoc on toast. I did not even know if I pressed film. Did I press film? <laughs> I kind of hope I didn't because I just talked a load of crap. Did I? Oh, I did. Seven minutes. Jesus. Uh, I can hear bagpipes. Can you hear that? It's pretty cool. This place is amazing. <laughs> Look at that. Oh my God. So my tent is like over there, which you cannot see. <laughs> if I turn the camera around onto me, you can't see me. And that's because I'm at the dark sky discovery point um, because it's really dark. <laughs> so it's really good for like stargazing. When I go over there, look, you can't see anything. That orangey thing in the middle is the moon coming up, which looks so cool. And there's a couple of flashy lights over there, which I think are like boats. But look, there's literally like no light pollution. How cool is that? There's a couple of flashy lights there. Other than that, just where the sun is still going down. So there's a full moon tonight, so that'll impede the stargaze in a little bit, but it still should be amazing. I actually love it here, like it's so cool. I'm just gonna sit up here. I don't even know where I've put my tent up. There's loads of midges over there, so I'm better off over here anyway. Look at the moon. 
Might try and do some like night lapses. Um, we'll see. Because the moon might look quite cool. Anyway. I might do some of those. If I do, you'll see them now. If I don't, I'll see you tomorrow. I can't go over this. Like, look at the shape of it. It's like an eye. Just seeing... Like, Jorah over there. Anyway, bye. <laughs> morning that was a mission and a half coming down that hill up there <laughs> i swear to god if i'd have scragged my leg on my pedal or on a bramble or on a nettle or on a thistle one more time <laughs> i'd have screamed and woke up everyone that's camped down there and everyone on the mainland probably um fuming but uh yeah it's now like half past seven um, and the ferry is at half past eight. That's the first ferry to go back to the mainland. I'm actually really sad to be leaving because I feel like I could spend so much longer here. Um, but then I say that about everywhere, so I'll just come back, it's fine. Um, but yeah, I wanna maybe get a quick dip in before I go. So I'm thinking the little beach by the ferry terminal. Might be a good shout. punctured again somewhere and just took a squirt to the back of the leg <sighs> new tyres for me when I get home <laughs> absolutely new freaking tyres these ones are like a sieve now I'm actually deploying the uh, whoa wobbling <laughs> I'm actually deploying the breathing techniques that Dan taught me in the swim session the other day <laughs> for cycling uphill. Woo. Sounds like I'm in labour, but uh, it seems to be working quite well. I would just like you to appreciate what goes into these shots sometimes. <laughs> that shot that I just uh, played right there got me in a bog. <laughs> Bog stuff not coming off. <laughs> it's stuck in all the holes. <laughs> the kind of waves are hydroelectric so we power the still with hydro in the whole distillery when there's enough water today it'll be running off the mains yeah we've got a bit of a drought yeah that's just our water to signify we use our own spring water to to make the gin and to dilute the gin after we've made it awesome um it's all victorian spring this one we plant a tree every time we sell a case or we plant them in advance you know plant yeah. areas up so we are fully carbon neutral and we've had the footprint fully worked out in fact we're climate positive i think you'd say we sequester 600 tonnes more than we use. Oh, wow. And uh, this one's more sort of community involvement. Um, so we sponsor local events and, you know, try where possible to employ people in the community and all the rest of it. Yeah. And what's the... This is contours. This is it? the contours of the... This is the contours of the general area of the estates. Torresdale's there, Carradale's there. Um, and Ben and Turk's here, which is the highest hill in Kintyre, which means hill of the boar or hill of the wild boar. So how like fast does it work? Like how? Uh, we can distill two hundred liters. That makes about two hundred forty bottles, seventy cl bottles in about a day. Is it? We let it sit for three weeks just to because it comes off the still at about eighty percent alcohol. Right. So we let it wash it down Keep and just it let it sit for two or three weeks. 
I've got a Polish friend who would love it at 80%. Well, yeah. <laughs> Actually, it's just all right, 80%, believe it or not. I wouldn't want to drink much of it, but you dip, dip your finger in it. Yeah. It's all right. <laughs> Clean your wounds. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I actually meant to stop here as well at the Anthony Gormley Grit statue, but my brain for some reason didn't realise that it was in Saddle Bay, which is literally right near the Abbey. But anyway, from here I cycled all the way down to Campbelltown, which was my next stop. From Campbelltown you can get ferries back to Ardrossan, which is southwest of Glasgow and has train connections to Glasgow. Had I come up on the train, that's what I'd have been doing, but as you know, I ditched my van in the middle of Argyle somewhere, so all that remained was for me to cycle back to it with these stunning views. And obviously I had to, uh, had to get in again, didn't I? You can't not! Number one rule, see this, get in. I had to practice my front crawl anyway, did you see that? There was about three strokes there. Olympics, here I come. Anyway, look at me just acting as if I didn't have another 40 to 50 kilometres to cycle before I got to Tarbot, which is where I was staying for the night, at the Morins B&B. This was the quirkiest place I have ever stayed. If you don't like clowns, don't go here. The guy that runs it was the nicest guy, and actually, it was really fun. Last morning, boys, I was actually really sad to be ending. I cycled back up to get my van from Kilmartin, and then, because I didn't want it to end, I actually drove down to Skip Ness, to the seafood cabin that's there, because I actually wanted to do this as part of the cycle route, but time constraints just didn't allow it. It was definitely worth driving down to anyway, and I got to go to another castle. I'm in love with Scottish castles, they're so good. And that's a wrap, boys. I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, if you've got any questions about the route, um, drop them in the comments and I'll try and get back to them. Um, the route was using the Wild About Argyle bike pack and route. There's loads of information on their website about the Argyle area, um, like loads. And all of the like every all of the stops that I went to, they're all on there. Um, it's been incredible. Like the area is amazing. Um, and it's just, it's been awesome to like see the places that I paddleboarded past last year when I was doing the adventure triathlon, but from the land um, and like join it all up. Um, the weather's been amazing. Thanks very much, sun, <laughs> for joining me this week. Um, couldn't have asked for better weather. Uh, so yeah, anyway, I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.